Hello, my name is Lucy Fisher West. Um, I am sitting at my sunroom table in El Paso, Texas on February the 4th, 2022. Um, I was born in Catskill, New York in 1949. I am the daughter of a Mexican mother and a German father and therein lies a tale as to how they met. And if I could have connected to food for you, I would, but I simply can't connect. They're meeting in a bull ring to any kind of food, so I will just leave it at that and you can ask me later. No, I don't think you can form your food traditions all on your own. The influences are going to come from your life experiences. My mother loved to cook. I think my mother loved to cook. I mean, when you, when you are um, the homemaker in a 1950s kitchen, I mean, th you do that, you did that. She cooked three meals, three meals a day as long as I can remember. And as long as I can remember, I have good memories of my mother cooking but I also have a really good memory of my father appreciating her cooking. And every time my mother put a plate in front of my father, he would kiss her hand. And sometimes she goes, ah! But for the most part, she was grateful that he enjoyed her cooking as much as, as, much as she did, as he did. So my mother had some very, very basic recipes that she followed. She was an excellent cook in terms, in my, in my recollection, she was an excellent cook. And several things made her an excellent cook in retrospect and thinking about how little she had in the way of resources because we were, we were dirt poor. Everybody in the neighborhood was dirt poor. So her resources were not fantastic and she didn't drive. So we were limited to what groceries we could get by walking about a mile, a mile and a half, or by walking in the other direction. Now, if you, if you can visualize where the Chamizal is now in Paisano Avenue, what was directly behind us was the canal that carried water from uh, Elephant Butte Dam when it, is, when it is released, and then at Mount Cristo Rey, it redirects. So there was a canal behind the house, and the Rio Grande River was in front of the house. So we lived in a riverbed. Um, so if you can visualize, to get groceries, we were either going to go south, get on a bus, go downtown, get on a trolley, and go to Juarez, get on another bus to go to the markets, and then do everything in reverse. Or we could walk a mile, a mile and a half to the closest grocery store, which would have been north of us, about maybe five streets north of us, and maybe five or six streets east of us. So we did that on a regular basis. And so, you know, what she cooked when I look at it as an adult, what she cooked was pretty basic. There was always rice in the house. She made her Mexican rice. There were almost always beans in the house, cooked in a clay pot, which I still have. So that clay pot now is over half a century old. I wouldn't know how to cook beans in anything else except that clay pot. So those were there. Now, my father being German, he was happy with whatever my mother cooked, but he was especially grateful when she cooked something with pork in it. Pig's knuckles were a delicacy for him. For my mother to cook pig's knuckles and sauerkraut, it was, you knew it had to be a holiday because he loved that. But when my mother made chile rellenos, he was just as equally happy. I don't remember ever bringing home food, like from a takeout place or something like that. Now, my mother and I brought things from the market in Juarez. I always called it our hunting, hunting expedition, our hunting and gathering expedition. My grandmother lived in Juarez. 
if I'm going to like situate you geographically, if you went across the border on the trolley, you wound up on 16th Sep September and Lerlo Avenue, which is the proximate center of town. You had the Juarez Market. If you, if you got off the, the trolley at that point, you either went toward the Juarez Market in one direction, or you went toward the Guatemoc Market in the other direction. My grandmother lived beyond the Guatemoc Market. And so on those hunting and gathering expeditions on foot, we would go from one end of Juarez to the other end of Juarez, getting our groceries and then bringing them home in reverse of how we got to Juarez, then we would come back. In 1970, um, I got married to an English professor, uh, also a folklorist, uh, John West. And there were things that I had, for lack of a better term, taken for granted in terms of my food traditions that as a folklorist, he was intent on capturing. And because he had such a community presence, it wasn't, it wasn't unusual for the Times or the Herald Post or any number of the television and radio stations to want to record him and then later me um, about food traditions here on the border. A lot of those food traditions wound up in, uh, in his Mexican-American folklore book. My mother and I were used to making tamales every year. Now, when you think about making tamales, it generally involves several people. Well, if you're an only child like I was, the several people were never more than my mother and me and sometimes a helper. So John, being the folklorist that he was, was very insistent uh, in taking pictures and Super 8 film of my mother making tamales. And while he was doing the filming and I was trying to help her make tamales, uh, we did actually write down that recipe. And a lot of that recipe wound up in the paper during the winter for, for, other, people, for other people to see. You know, you can't have, you can't have um, a mother who likes making tamales and not have your child want to continue in that tradition. And so um, this is probably one of my very, very favorite pictures of my, of my mother and my son uh, making tamales. One of the things that was very important to me as a mother was that I passed on traditions to our son. And he loved being in the kitchen. Huh? And as a lot of moms would do, uh, especially at Christmas time, is that you bake, you bake cookies. And so it was, I think, one of the first real traditions that I think we maintained in the house was, um, was my cooking, my making cookies with my son. John was a Southerner, and the first time we went to Mississippi, I went to Mississippi to meet his family, it was an entire different world for me because there were vegetables in Mississippi that his mother grew that I had never even seen before. And there were recipes traded back and forth. And the one memorable table that comes to my mind is of his aunt cooking for us. Of course, everything from scratch with at least one or two meat dishes and then like seven vegetables mustard greens and beet greens and this and that and the other and okra. Okra is not something that I stomach well, okay? It was like, mm, it was just a little bit too slimy for me. So I came home from Mississippi with a new and different um, 
view on vegetables, okay? In my mother's kitchen, we had calabacitas, we had frijoles, especialmente de la olla, we had um, uh, rice, but other vegetables were not as easy. I mean, sure, you had carrots and you had cucumbers in a salad, but the variety of vegetables that I ran into in Mississippi was just totally, totally new. And John being the folklorist that he was, I also picked up, I also picked up reasons that you did particular foods at particular times. Okay, in my mother's Mexican kitchen, we had Lenten foods during Lent, you know, and we had chicken soup when you were sick. And all of those kind of have stayed with me. I love Lenten foods. But for John, the whole business of having black eyed peas on New Year's Day became a tradition. Black eyed peas, cornbread, those were things that you always had and love it. I love the way that the, the kitchen smells when you are baking something. Um, carnitas for the Mexican side, a pork roast for my father's side, my father's German side. Um, and in the Mexican vein, I have also gotten very brave and gone beyond the standard Mexican food and learned how to cook chiles en nogada, which I had had only a couple of times before I decided, oh, I really should learn how to cook this. And so I did. And for me, chiles en nogada probably constitutes the most complex dish that I make because it involves peeling that bitter skin off walnuts. And that is not easy to do. Even with fingernails, it's not easy to do. And it's very time consuming. If you're gonna do it right, it's very time consuming. But that's probably, when I think about what do I cook that is the most labor intensive, it's probably chiles and nogada. Cooking for somebody who appreciates your cooking is, a treat. It might be work, but it's also a treat and it's very rewarding. And when I do, when, when I cook and present a table of food, I really kind of remember my mother and my father and that connection in the kitchen in cooking food, offering food, receiving food with gratitude. And that's, that's the basis of a lot of the way, sorry, of the, of the way that I think about food. <laughs>